Alrighty, so we are starting at the bottom of page two. So looking at this equation, first we identify it as a log equation. Because it has the word log. Next, we describe our transformations. Now, we haven't ever described transformations for a log before, but what you'll find is that the setup is still the same as it's been for any type of function with transformations. So this three getting multiplied out in front will be a vertical stretch by three. But the plus one is a little bit elusive because the question is, is that on the inside with x or on the outside? Maybe it would be helpful if we looked at the next problem. On this one, that plus two is definitely inside the natural log and with x, this plus one, since it's not in parentheses, that's gonna be an outside transformation and it's gonna move us up one. So we have to think about our vertical asymptote and if it's going to get affected by these. So remember, log, think a vertical tree. If I vertically stretch the tree, it doesn't change location. If I move that vertical line up one, is it actually moving? Nope, same vertical line. So for this one, our vertical asymptote is still gonna be at zero. zero. So now we move to step two, which is isolating the log and then putting it in exponential form. Folks, the reason why we have to isolate the log is as follows. If I try to do big animal ears at this point, I see the word log, I think of the elephant with its big what is my base for this one? 10. Ten, awesome. So big animal is the X, that's what's inside the log, and then my ears is over here. What's the problem? Yeah, what's the three corresponding to then? And what's that plus one just hanging out over there doing? So we can't actually write it in exponential form with how it's currently written. So what we will need to do is isolate the log. So we're actually gonna sidebar down to the bottom of this page. And I'm gonna start by writing f of x as y. So y equals three log base 10 of x plus one. Now, since we want to isolate the log, this is all one thing. So if I wanted to isolate that, just like isolating a square root like we had to do for solving, what would you guys try to do first for this one? Minus the one. So we're gonna subtract the one, which gives me y minus one equals three log base 10 of x. Can I isolate that log a little bit further? We can, we can divide both sides by three. Gross. So now we have log base 10 of x equals y minus one over three. At this point, that log is completely isolated. So now we should be able to put it in exponential form. And if you're like, well, Miss Cairo, but we still have the one, we still have the three, we just shifted things around. That's important as far as what parts of big animal ears it corresponds to. My 10 is the base, my x is the answer, and then this entire thing will be the exponent. So big animal ears, and that big nasty thing is going to be our exponent. So then our equation that we are going to be using will be 10 to the y minus one over three equals x. So I'm going to go ahead and write that above. 
above our table. 10 y minus 3 over, oops, not y minus 3, scratch that. 10 to the y minus 1 divided by 3 equals x. So it is an exponential form. But because our exponent is so doggone nasty, trying to use our power values here is going to be a little bit sketchier than it has been in the past. So it's similar to what we did at the end of class yesterday, where I need to think to myself, what can I plug in for y to get me those power values? You can certainly set up a little mini equation to solve if you want, or you can think about it a little bit more intuitively. So I need this fraction to be equal to negative 1. What divided by 3 is negative 1? Negative 3. Well, what minus 1 gives me negative 3? Negative 2. So that would be our first y value. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, nope, I didn't like doing that at all. You can also set up an algebraic equation. And we can say, all right, we need to get negative 1 for our exponent. So that means y minus 1 over 3 has to be equal to negative 1. How do I get rid of the fraction? Multiply by 3. So negative 3 equals y minus 1. Then we add 1 to both sides and we get negative 2. If you would prefer to show that work, you certainly can. Um, if you need to, extra scratch paper, those two big columns on that first shelf, oh, the dinosaur on the left side, um, that's all scratch paper. So if you ever need additional paper to show work on and staple into your practice set, feel free to do so. So what about 0? How am I going to get this whole fraction to be equal to 0? Well, what divided by 3 gives me 0? Zero. What minus one will give me that zero? <coughs> one. So one minus one is zero, and zero divided by three is zero. And that's going to give me that nice power value. So what about one? What divided by three is one? Three. Three divided by three is one. So then what minus 1 gives me the 3? 4. 4. So 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Woof. Or you can do what we did over here and set up a little mini equation to figure out what y value is going to give us those power values. So from here, we simply plug in those y inputs to find our corresponding x values. So negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. Folks, what's 10 to the negative first? Negative 10. 1 over 10. We give it a bad attitude. Take it to the downstairs. Then our next one. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 divided by 3 is 0. What's 10 to the 0? I know. 1. 1. <laughs> 1. Then 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. What's 10 to the first, Duke? 10 to the first? 10. ten. Huzzah. All right, so 1 tenth, negative 2. So just a titch past that line. Down, negative 2. 1, 1. And then 10, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're curving towards the asymptote this way. And then swooshing out that way. Our domain is x is greater than 0 or 0 to infinity. And then our range is rarn. Think of the little lion in your jungle of vertical asymptote trees. So you can do your fancy r or negative infinity to infinity. So to me, this is about the worst type of problem in this unit. I think this is harder than a lot of the solving stuff that we do later. 
It is very involved, but all of this rearrangement stuff we are doing with the logs is going to help us later when we start solving. So let's go through those steps one more time. First, we described the transformations and figured out where the asymptote was. To find the points, we go, gross, we don't like working with it in logarithmic form, let's put it in exponential form. But when we tried to do big animal ears, we had that extra stuff that didn't correspond to the big or the animal or the ears, the three and the one. So we moved all that stuff out of the way first to isolate the log term, and then we wrote it in exponential form, big animal ears, and that gave me this nasty business. Then, same as what we did yesterday with exponentials, we want to get the exponent to be equal to those power values, but because of that fraction, this one was a little bit harder to do. So you can set up mini equations to solve, or you can kind of use guess and checking. What questions do we have on that problem? Let's go ahead and move to the next one. So transformations first. We identify it as a log function because it's got natural log. So I might go ahead and replace this with log base e, since that will help us when we go to write it in exponential form. Transformation wise, what's that plus two on the inside doing? Left two, good, left two. And the minus three, down three. Woo! So then our vertical asymptote starts at zero. If we move it left two, it's moving. If we move it down three, that line is still the same vertical line. So the only thing that affects it is the left two. So now we have a vertical asymptote at negative two. I also want you to put a note by this one that says use your calculator. Anytime you have base e, whether in a regular exponential or a natural log function, you will always need to use your calculator to figure out what that yucky little irrational constant will give you as a decimal. So if we try to do big animal ears, my base is e, my answer is x plus 2, and then my e would be the y or the f of x. That negative three, it's a problem. It's just kind of awkwardly hanging out over there. So we're gonna need to isolate the log first. So same as the last problem, we're gonna sidebar down here, simultaneously replacing f of x with y. So y equals log base e of x plus two minus three. If I told you to isolate the log, what do you think we should do? Add 3. So y plus 3 equals log base e of x plus 2. Can I subtract negative 2? Move that plus 2 out of the log? No. And I actually don't need to do anything with that because at this point, my log is isolated. And we have our corresponding port points of exponential form. Big, base E, that whole thing is the animal, and that whole thing over there is the ears. So when we rewrite it, my base is E, my exponent is Y plus 3, and my answer is X plus 2. Now our final step, and this was way up at the top, step three, and this is the first time we've had to use it. It says turn to an x equals equation and use the power values. So when we did exponential form here, these were both x equals equations and I didn't have to do any manipulating. Here, that went straight to an x equals equation as well. Is this an x equals equation? Uh-uh. So we're gonna have to subtract two. And when I subtract that 2, that is at ground level. So it doesn't go up to the exponent. It doesn't turn it to a y plus 1 or anything. That is what my exponential equation will look like. So I'm going to go ahead and write that by my table. 
x equals e to the y plus 3 minus 2. So now we need to pick y values that will give us those power values. This one is more friendly, more like the ones that we did yesterday. See if you can figure out what values you can plug in for y to give you negative 1, 0, and 1 for the exponent. Negative 4 plus 3 will give you negative 1. Negative 3 plus 3 will give you 0. And then negative 2 plus 3 will give us 1. Raise your hand if you got those right. Right, we're getting there. So plotting those points backwards 4, down 1. Oh, no, sorry. We're not ready to plot those points yet. We have to plug them in to find our x values. Hold on, there's no x value there. So if we plug negative 4 in, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So this is where we need to use our calculator. So you can type the full thing in if you want. To get e, so everybody take your calculators out. So you see the log button, and right below it is the natural log button. Above the natural log button, you have e to the x as a second feature. If you hit second ln, that gives you e, and it automatically prompts you to put in a power. So we're going to put in negative 4 plus 3. Arrow over to the right to escape exponent. And don't forget that sneaky little minus 2 on the end. Hit enter and gross. We'll do negative 1.6. It's good enough for me. Second enter to copy paste. Now we're going to plug in negative 3. Where would E be on the calculator? Second natural log. You know what? We better write that here in the notes. So to get E, second, and then LN. So hit those two buttons, and that will give you E. Second enter is the shortcut that copy paste. So when I put in negative 3, we get negative 1. Second enter, when we put in negative 2, we get 0.7. So plotting these coordinates, and remember it's these ones. We'll get negative 1.6. So about there-ish, and then down 4, negative 1, negative 3, and 0.7 down 2. Not my favorite graph. We're going to curve towards the asymptote, and then shoot exponentially upward and outward. See if you can state the domain and the range for this one. Where do our x values start, but it's not included? At negative 2, at the asymptote. So x is greater than negative 2, or parentheses negative 2 infinity. And then what's the range? Rarn! All real numbers. We go all the way down and curve all the way up. Or you can have negative infinity to infinity. 
So folks, those log graphing problems, they are tough. So we're gonna kind of do a catch and release on this to make sure you guys are solid for the homework. Um, on page one, those two log functions, those are pretty easy. There's no transformation, so your asymptote will be at zero for both of those, and there's no isolating of the log necessary. You can just straight up put those in exponential form. On page two, these are the tough ones, and I want you to put a note that says, show your log to exponential form work. We might be able to do that above the problem, or if you want, you can label that work down at the bottom here, which is probably what I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and start with, hmm, let's start with number nine. I'm going to give you a few minutes to try the first couple of steps, state the transformations, find the asymptote, and then if you get done with that, you can start trying to rearrange it. So state the transformations, find the asymptote first. What's the negative do? Reflect. Vertical reflect. The four is base. The plus three on the inside. Left three. The plus four. Up four. So here's my vertical asymptote at zero. If I vertically reflect it, it's in the same spot. If I move it left three, it is gonna be in a different spot. If I move it up four, it's still gonna be the same asymptote. So there is where your asymptote should be. The left three slides it to the left three units. And that will have the equation x equals negative three. Are we okay with that part with the transformations and how we describe them for both exponentials and logs? Log tree, vertical asymptote. Let's go ahead and move to the harder part, which is taking this logarithmic function and writing it in exponential form. So we've got y equals negative log 4 x plus 3 plus 4. Is my log isolated? Nope. So what do you want to do first to isolate the log? Minus the four, perfect. Our log is not quite isolated yet. What else do we need to do? Divide by that negative one, perfect. So divide by negative one to get rid of that. And folks, can I use division distribution to make this left side simpler? We sure can. Y divided by negative 1 is a negative Y. Negative 4 divided by negative 1 is a positive 4. So then negative Y plus 4 equals log base 4 of X plus 3. See if you can write that in exponential form and start making your table.
big animal ears. So if you're like, well, how can we say that this is all the ears and we couldn't do that with the original one? The base is always here. The animal or the answer comes from inside the log. So I can't just put that plus four as part of the answer. And the ears always comes from the left side. So this is why we can't have that awkward floating negative out in front and we can't have that awkward plus four there. We have to have everything in one solid spot. The base, the answer, and the equals the exponent. So in exponential form, this is going to be four to the negative y plus four equals x plus three. Our final step is changing it to an x equals equation. So subtract three. So our equation, and I'm gonna box this off. Write number nine. So our equation that we are going to use will be four to the negative y plus four minus three equals x. So now we wanna make our power values be equal to negative one, zero, and one. See what you can do from here. So negative five would give us negative one. Positive four would give us zero since the opposite of four plus four is zero. And then three would give us one. You mean five. Hmm? Oh gosh, I put negative five, yes, five. So from here, we can evaluate by plugging in. And folks, you can use your calculator, but for ones that don't involve E or nasty decimals, it is good to practice doing PEMDAS and plugging those in. So negative five plus four is negative one. What's four to the negative one? One fourth. And when we subtract three, that would be negative two and three fourths. That's right on that one. Negative two and three fourths. So if you did that on your calculator, four to the negative five plus four arrow over to escape the exponent, minus three. You see we get negative 2.75. So you can put either there, um, just make sure that you know how to graph it and that you understand where those values are coming from. Then if we plug in four, negative four plus four is zero. Four to the zero is one. One minus three is negative two. And then Plugging in three, negative three plus four is one. Four to the first is four. Four minus three is one. So we get negative two and three fourths, so like here-ish, and then up five. Then negative two, up four, and then one, three. So curving up towards the asymptote this way then curving outward. Domain, x is greater than negative three or negative three to infinity. And then the range, all real numbers. More questions? All right, folks, I'm turning you loose on, turning you loose on number seven. Try that one.
And again, if you need a sidebar down below to show your work, or you might be able to squeeze it in above here. Transformation wise, we've got a vertical stretch by three. We've got a base of four, and you don't have to write that. The negative two moves us right two, and the plus one moves us up one. So, thinking about moving our vertical asymptote, vertically stretching it does nothing, the base does nothing, but if I slide it to the right two units, we are going to be in a different spot. If I move that vertical line up one, it's still going to be in the same spot. So it's only the right two that moves it. Next, we want to isolate our log so that we can write it in exponential form. So I would subtract 1. Then divide by 3. And then we can write it in exponential form, where that's my big, that's my animal, and that whole thing is my ears. So four to the y minus one over three equals x minus two. Add the two over to the other side, y minus one over three plus two. Well, it's x. So you got to show me the equation in exponential form that you are using for the logs. So now this one's kind of similar to what we did in the notes. Figure out what you can put in for y to get those power values. Feel free to show any side work. Maybe you want to actually set up those mini equations to solve. But you got to show me how you're getting those power values.
What can we plug in for y to get a power value of negative 1? Negative 2, excellent. Because negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3, and negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. What can we plug in to give me 0? 1. Oh, when I put negative 2 again, what am I doing? 2. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, negative 2. Oh, my gosh. So then if we plug in 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 divided by 3 is 0. What about for the last one? 4, because 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 divided by 3 gives us 1. So folks, find those corresponding x values. Um, you, probably, you could probably do this one without your calculator, but if you need to use your calculator, go right ahead. One kind of common mistake that I see on these problems is when the asymptote is not at zero, sometimes students will start counting over from that as if it was the y-axis. Pre-cal kids do it too, so just be careful that you are always counting over from the origin when you are plotting those points. My domain for this one is x greater than 2 or 2 to infinity, and then the range, all real numbers. So folks, since 8 and 10 are natural log problems, you will want to use your calculator to evaluate those, but you still have to show your table and how you wrote the equation in exponential form.